Comedian Matt Reif responded to criticism that one of his jokes was sexist and disrespectful by doing what he does best, making more jokes. During the opening of his new Netflix comedy special, Natural Selection, Reif made a joke about domestic violence, which some very online people found offensive. Following the backlash, Reif took to Instagram stories where he posted, if you've ever been offended by a joke I've told, here's a link to my official apology. The link led to a medical supply store selling helmets for people with special needs, a joke that stirred up even more controversy, uh, unsurprisingly, rather. By the way, here's a little bit from the joke uh, that uh, lit the match. I've only been to Baltimore one time. I ate lunch there, and the hostess who, like, seats you at the restaurant had a black eye. <laughs> a full black eye. And it wasn't like, what happened? Yeah, it was pretty obvious what happened. <laughs> And we couldn't get over the fact that we're like, this is the face of the company? Like, this is, this is where you have greeting people? And my boy who I was with was like, yeah, I feel bad for her, man. I feel like they should you know, put her in the kitchen or something where nobody, where nobody has to see her face, you know? And I was like, yeah, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. So, so I have my general comedy cancel culture spiel that you've heard a hundred times that I'll just quickly give and then you can give us a more granular perspective on Matt Rife because I understand you actually watched this special. I did. Um, I think comedy is allowed to be offensive and provocative and edgy and you should be expecting that kind of thing and it's its own thing. It's, it's not reflective on who he is as a person and if you don't like it, it's not for you, that's fine. But it's really weird to be like, oh my God, I was I, an offensive comedian, said offensive things and I'm really upset about it. I don't understand and I, I think people should not do that. So I think the problem is that the special wasn't edgy or provocative. Where was the joke in that? Like I'm not offended by the joke, but the, the, the whole setup is this is the opening joke of the thing. Um, he's in DC. He says, I, I love DC. I was in Baltimore. Um, Baltimore is ratchet. Baltimore is poor. I went to a restaurant and the waitress had a black eye. They should put her in the kitchen. Maybe if she could cook, she wouldn't have the black eye. I mean, look, if that is the cutting edge of humor to you, God bless, you'll really love this special. But I think to many people, there were two issues. One, that it felt like really stale, warmed over, like 1950s, bam, right in the kisser jokes. Like, mm -hmm. okay, if that's your stuff, watch it. It's not provocative, it's not new. Um, and then the, the other issue is that there's a, it's a significant gap between the work that Matt Reif did to make him famous, which was lar largely crowd work clips that were circulating virally on Twitter or TikTok or whatever. That's or certainly how he's pierced uh, my radar. I'm not even a big comedy stand-up person, mm -hmm. but I see but a lot everywhere. of reels, tons of him. Right, and so the contrast between that, where he's often very charming, I think that he uses his looks to disarm the audience. He gets away with saying some um, genuinely edgy and provocative things to the people in the audience because he does it with a wink and a smile, and it's like, oh, we're, it's little flirtatious, it's fun and cute. It just was a very different tone from what he was doing in the Netflix special, which at oftentimes felt mean-spirited. Now, there are many mean-spirited, edgy, dark, mean comedians, but they're known for that. And I think that what people are reacting to is the gap between his public persona up until this point and what came across in this Netflix special. I don't, I, the reels I've seen of him um, tend to be very um, edgy and very sexual. Very, yeah. He does a lot of they're, like... They're flirty. Well, it's, it's beyond flirty. Okay. Uh, it's inappropriate. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't show my grandmother them. I mean... Well, he does a whole bit right after that about um, how much he loves old people, how much he would be happy to be in a physical relationship with an older woman. Yeah. And then there's a weird colloquy about him liking to spend a lot of time in an old folks home with his grandmother um, who had dementia. And he preferred well, to spend time. You're making it sound like a sweet little boy. No, he no. tells dirty jokes. No, no. What, so what I'm getting at here is actually that the joke, I, the joke that I'm telling is literally the joke he told. And to the extent that what I'm saying isn't funny, neither was he. He was just talking yeah. about visiting his grandmother in an old folks' home and how he kind of didn't want to do that because kids don't like to do that. And the old guy next door had some fun stories. He had sex with Rosa Parks on the bus. Ha ha ha. I mean, it just, it's just, I'm not offended on behalf of Rosa Parks. It just wasn't that funny. And then the last like third of the special was him complaining about getting a Twitter pile on. Which, let me tell you, Rob, you and I have both been in this position where if anybody was going to empathize with what it meant to be a vaguely public figure who is getting piled on Twitter, it's me. 
I was his audience. Tell me how you have been aggrieved, sir. Me too, and yeah. The, the aggrievement was just that he had overstuffed his backpack on a flight and, and it wouldn't fit under the seat in front of him. And when the stewardess asked him to put it somewhere else, he wouldn't. Yeah, we should start World War III over that. That's like, real. when I got dragged on Twitter for my airline story, it was because I was complaining that they had lost, United had lost my bags on my way to a black tie wedding in Bahrain, and I didn't That's have totally uh, shoes. To... That, there was, the airplane was actually at fault, and I still got I dragged for it. I recap my TSA experience <laughs> on X every time I get on a plane. Right. Uh, so I got, I got dragged to fill for that, because I was like, I had to wear espadrilles to a wedding, and people thought I was being, like, bourgeois. Espadrilles are, like... See, they didn't know what espadrilles were, and that's why they thought I was being bourgeois. That's like a, it's like wearing a sandal, like flip flops, like a, like a, like um, like mm -hmm. they're like a Spanish peasant sandal. It's like a, you know, the woven grass shoe. How dare we? Like toms, like, like toms, okay. like it's like a tom okay. shoe with a grass woven bottom, right? Okay. Um, so he wasn't even on the right in his story, and I, when I tell you like a third, like there's a solid twenty minutes of this special that's him just talking about how he dunked on a woman who was complaining about him on Twitter by saying that she was fat. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, you got her. She disagreed with you arguing with the stewardess. You called her fat. Yay, right. that's a joke? I mean, it well, just wasn't a joke. Well, again, his humor's not for everyone. It's, it's not for me. I don't find him particularly funny. The problem is it's not it's for not, his it audience. Changed. It's not for his own audience that's been cultivated on the app. But I don't... It seems to me the the jokes I see on those reels are very much the same category of... I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. I the just, audience loves being flirted with, and that's what he was not doing. Well, that's not what he, what he wasn't doing. And he, there also wasn't this, like, oh, just kidding. Like, there's, like, a, oh, shucks, I'm just an overgrown boy who's just messing around vibe in, in his crowd work, mm -hmm. which, again, he wasn't doing crowd work here. Maybe that's just the fundamental problem, that he's just not good at not crowd work. But, like, take, for example, the, the domestic violence joke. Say what you want about Dave Chappelle, and he got a lot of blowback for this, but he did a joke in one of his last specials about how he was hitting on a girl in a comedy club, and it turns out that the girl's girlfriend, the woman's girlfriend so was he there. he about hitting girls. Wait a minute. The girl's girlfriend was there, and that uh, she like, basically challenged him to a fight, and he subverts expectations in the joke by saying, yeah, and so then I clocked her. I hit her, right? Many people were mad at that joke, but I would argue that that joke was a setup. It was a it was a joke. It was constructed as a joke. It was funny because it subverted your expectations because it made you feel like, oh gosh, I was gonna fight for this girl, but now I can't because I can't hit a woman and she's lesbian. But oh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do it because I'm Dave Chappelle and f your couch, right? Like that was the joke. It's a clearly identifiable joke. And so much of what Matt Rife was doing was just like what you would expect a bunch of 15 year olds in 1996 to be talking about behind the playground. Oh, I saw a woman and she had a black eye. That made me feel uncomfortable. So I'm kind of going to laugh through it as I describe that moment with my friend, but it wasn't an actual joke. I mean, but that's just the quality. I'm perfectly willing to believe the joke was not that good, but that, but people aren't like, there's multiple articles being written around that aren't saying the joke was not good. That's saying it was offensive and he's being slammed for it and he should be dragged by it. That's what I, not even object to, that's just what I'm noting. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, don't I care mean, that much. so one user wrote, the independent wrote this up, and they saw a user who wrote Sexist. The, the way women uh, 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 catapulted Matt Rife into popularity, and the second he gets a comedy special on Netflix, he immediately betrays them with a joke about domestic violence is crazy, isn't it? Another person said, the girls and gays were Matt Rife's biggest demographic, and he used his Netflix special to pander to toxic uh, masculinity. It feels like a mm -hmm. betrayal. Another one said, not Matt Rife, building his platform on catering uh, sorry, the computer jump. Catering like, to the female audience and then opening his Netflix special with a domestic violence joke. You know, so it really, I, I really do think it's not the substance. If he just burst onto the scene with the special, it would be kind of an unfunny special, but it's not a betrayal. It's a betrayal because of the gap between his persona up until this point and this. All right, if you say so. I. You should watch it. Everyone, I mean, I don't no, know. I'm, I'm not, not trying not to drive up. Time. So, but I mean, the biggest crime here, I think, is just that it wasn't funny. And I'm someone who has enjoyed the clips that I've seen of him on on YouTube. And even there's a tiny bit of crowd work after the credits at the very end of the special. That is I, probably the only time I genuinely cracked a smile because he he does have a way with people. He he does. I mean, let's be real. He's very handsome. And yeah, that, that is part of what it is. Him far. But you know who is the the best crowd work guy out there right now is uh, that Greek guy Stavros, 
and he is not trading on his looks. <laughs> he is a he's from Baltimore and makes jokes about Baltimore, but they're not at the expense of Baltimore. And I, I just think that's more misogynistic effective. comment about what's this guy's name? Um, now you're belittling Stavros, some uh, hapless, Hal- Halkias? Halkias, I'm not some, sure. Um, he used to be on physically um, less well predisposed. You, you're the podcast. I can't. I don't know if I can say it, but it, it's. Rhymes with bum what, town. I, I do know what you he mean. was on that uh, oh, podcast. That podcast was hilarious. Well, he, I think Stavros is very, very, very funny. Um, but again, it's because even though he's sharp and witty and subversive, and they said he doesn't really take it offensive out, things. Yeah, but he doesn't take it out. I don't know. I, people don't like the punch on punch down formula. I really don't know. But he, I don't know. You compare the two and judge for All right, yourself. Well, I'm fine to evaluate jokes on it, the is it funny axis. I just don't like the is it offensive axis because. Who cares? They're jokes. Well, I just said the Dave Chappelle joke, I think, was funny, even if you think it's offensive. And I I just cannot say the thing. Maybe maybe next time, Matt. One other thing. I do think part of what happened to him is that he got catapulted into premature fame. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he is Netflix special ready. But he got viral, and so they'll give anybody a Netflix special. Remember the woman who during the 2020 used to just mouth over Trump quotes? So it would be Trump playing, and she would just like... Like, oh, talk God. over it, and they gave her a Netflix show based on that, and it did not do well, and she immediately went away. It's not her fault. It's not these people's fault. They get pushed into this because of internet fame, and then they, they blow up. So I think that's what happened to him. He's just not ready. Maybe his next one will be better. This just wasn't that funny. There's a joke in Rick and Morty about how getting a Netflix deal is a very easy and relatable goal for all young people. There's one whole episode where Rick is trying to stop Morty secretly from having his um, his heist movie get bought by Netflix. And it's very <laughs> fun. He gives this just stupid pitch like, well, it's a heist, but then there's a double cross. And then you find out the thing they were heisting, they had all the time, and the Netflix executive is like, that's really good. Oh, my God, we need to buy this immediately. <laughs> all right, I'm mostly uh, rising is just me recapping uh, Rick and Morty these days. Tomorrow for the show, Brianna will be away starting out your Thanksgiving a little early. Uh, Goodbye to you. Farewell. Happy travels. I I have um, womanly responsibilities in terms of having to actually cook this meal and prep, so i got to go home and help my mom. All right. I shall be, as the man, I shall just be (laughs) eating Thanksgiving when it is I'm sure that's right. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.